Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Northport Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. Look at that. After a year, I might have it down. Thank you to Pastor Dave Powell for leading our worship services and Bible studies while Pastor Attila is away. We are very grateful and blessed to have him. Pastor Attila is away and will return on Sunday, May 15th. Should a pastoral care emergency arise, please call the church office. Reminders. Food drive for Salvation Army tomorrow at 10 a.m. to noon. Bible study Tuesday at 11. Prayer shawls Tuesday at 2. Soup and sandwich will be Wednesday and Thursday. Men's breakfast Thursday at 8.30 at Old World. The annual congregational meeting will be held today immediately following the morning worship service. The purpose of the meeting will be to approve officers for the new year budget for 22 to 23, and any other business to come before the congregation. And I'm going to ask those in the nominating committee um, meet with me after the congregational meeting. Thank you all to who returned your pledge cards. If you haven't yet returned yours, please accept this as a reminder to do so. Pledge cards are available in the narthex. At the end of each pew is the red attendance book. Please sign your name, pass it down the pew so everyone can sign, and then return the back book back to the aisle at the end of the pew. We thank you for doing this. Today's flowers are given by Marion Wright and John Gillette in remembrance of the Gillette family. Reminder, next Sunday, May 1st, will be kick off our new church year. In celebration of that, we will once again offer fellowship hour following worship. However, there are only volunteers for the first three weeks. The sign-up sheet is hanging in Fellowship Hall. Also next Sunday, we're going to bring back the birthday jar. Watch your newsletter for a reminder of the history of the birthday jar and how it began. Mark your calendar for a German dinner to be held May 27th. That's a Friday at 530 Tickets will be $15 per person and will be on sale next week. Watch your newsletter for more details. There will be no home Bible study this Thursday. The next home Bible study will be the last Thursday in May. If you want to sign up or host, please see Dolores Edward. Dolores Edwards. I had a brain there. Woo. Um, she needs hosts from June to November. Reminder, if you have a cell phone, we ask that you please turn it off or turn it on silent. Let us be in worship.
our loving and heavenly Father. Today we gather to worship you as we continue to celebrate the most important event in human history, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We remember the horrible sufferings that your Son endured on the cross for each of us, and yet remember our Savior's prayer as he was dying on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they not know what they do. We now see that the people in that day did not know fully what they were doing as they drove those ghastly, hideous, and ugly nails through his hands and feet. Just as today, we do not realize what we do when we reject you and your ways in our hearts and lives. We thank you that on the first Easter morning, you broke the bonds of death and rose from the grave as conqueror and earth and reuniting a sinful mankind with a holy God. So today and every day, we with all the world proclaim, He is risen. He is risen indeed.
please be seated and I think it's time for the come up and I think Boo has a exciting message for us today. Everybody look up at the picture we have up there and can you tell me what that is? A doggy. No, it's not a doggy. Anybody else? A <laughs> what? A bunny rabbit. No, it's not a bunny rabbit either. A lamb, a sheep. You are absolutely correct, Dalton. We've kind of talked about lambs and sheep before, haven't we? Can anybody tell me what we've talked about? Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Jesus is our shepherd and we're the lambs. Jesus yeah. is our shepherd and we are the lamb. Is that what you were going to say, Amelia? Yes, it is. I'm so glad you listen to me when I'm up here. <laughs> well, today, guys, we're going to learn a little bit about a psalm that you are going to learn a lot about as you grow older, and it's going to become very dear to your heart. And it all has to do with that lamb we have up there. Now, my question to you is, do you see anything strange about that lamb? It's laying down. It's laying down. That is one of the things. It's in the house. It's in the house. You're absolutely correct. Do lambs live in the house? No. No? Where do they live? In the fields, in the pastures, in the barn, there's a lot of different places that they can lay down, but we don't normally see them laying there on the floor next to a couch now, do we? No, nope, not usually. Well, the reason that he's laying there is I'm going to tell you a little story about the lamb and how the lamb is so associated with us in Jesus. Every once in a while, a ewe, which is a mother lamb, will give birth to a lamb and here she's going to reject it. There are many reasons she may do this, and if the lamb is returned to the ewe, the mother may even kick the poor animal away. Once a ewe rejects one of her lambs, she will never change her mind. These little lambs will hang their heads so low that it looks like something is wrong with its neck. Their spirit is broken. These lambs are called bummer lambs. Unless the shepherd intervenes, the lamb will die rejected and alone. So do you know what the shepherd does? He takes care of it. He takes care of it. You're right. But how does he do that? He brings it to his house. That's one of the things that he does, Alton. That is absolutely correct. He takes the rejected little one into his home. He hand feeds it, he keeps it warm by the fire, and he will wrap it up with blankets and hold it to his chest so the bummer can hear his heartbeat. Once the lamb is strong enough, the shepherd will place it back in the field with the rest of the flock. But that sheep never forgets how the sheep cared for him when his mother rejected him. And when the shepherd calls for the flock, guess who runs to him first? A bummer lamb, you're absolutely correct. 
The bummer sheep is the first to arrive because he knows his voice intimately. It's not that the bummer lamb is loved anymore by the shepherd. It's just he knows intimately the one who loves it. It's not that it's loved more. It just believes it is because it has experienced the loved of one-on-one. -on -one. So many of us are bummer lambs in our life. We're rejected and broken. We go through hard times. We need to find other love and other strength to carry us through. But it's the good shepherd that cares for every need and holds us close to his heart. Who is the good shepherd? Jesus. Jesus, that's absolutely correct. He keeps us close to his heart so we can hear his heart beat. We may be broken, but we are deeply loved by the shepherd Jesus. Well, there is a psalm, what's called the 23rd Psalm, I'm going to read you this morning. And you're going to find out that through life there are many, 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 many things that are going to make you rely upon what's said in this psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside still waters. Excuse me, I just lost my place. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That psalm, guys, is very dear to my heart, and you're going to find as you grow and you hear it over and over and again in the instances and circumstances that it's brought to life for us. But I want you to go away with today knowing we can all be bummer lambs at once, and we all need the strength of not only of our parents and our loved ones, but the pure love of Jesus Christ that we hold in our heart because he's the one that can help us to overcome everything. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being the good shepherd and always taking care of us in both our time of need and our time of happiness because you are the creator of both. We ask this in thy name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Boo. I had never heard of a bummer lamb before. Had any of you, raise your hand if you've heard of that, that phrase before. Kim and Lou. Okay. I, that is cool. Uh, thank you. Wow. As we come to our time of celebrations and concerns, um, we'll have some of them up there in just a few moments, but we'll start with the celebrations. And uh, just a reminder again that next week we uh, begin the birthday celebrations again. So come prepared and We've not done this since I've been here. But somebody told me that the person whose birthday it is has to stand up, sing, and dance. Is that right? There's a hat involved. There's a hat involved, yeah. Pastor left it up here. I don't know. So, um, fair warning. Uh, birthdays this week. Uh, Monday is Winona Vanoy. Is Winona here? Okay, and Lola Van Wert is on Tuesday. And any birthdays not on the list? Just a reminder, if 
you don't think you've given your birthday to the office so that we can celebrate that and you'll have your chance to wear the hat and dance, um, <laughs> let Patty know when your birthday is. Uh, anniversaries, Paul and Anita Strong is on Tuesday. Any other anniversaries? There, there they are, happy anniversary. Congratulations. Any other anniversaries? Okay, Kim, if we're ready, we'll sing. Happy birthday to you. For prayer concerns, they'll be up on the screen as we uh, begin our time of prayer. And how many of you, I love the pastor always asks ask this, how many of you have a prayer concern that, that is on your heart that you've not shared with the church at this point and that you just want God's extra attention and, and presence felt? That's most of us again, yeah. Um, know that you're not alone in those prayers. So as we um, come to the Lord, let us bow our heads and hearts in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, we come to you because you've asked us to. You've said to bring to you the concerns, the fears, the joys, the celebrations, to share our hearts with you. And so, Lord, today, we lift up these who are scrolling, the names who are scrolling by on the screen, knowing that they are more than names. They are hearts and loves, they are lives, they are family. And Lord, we also lift up to you the people of Ukraine, the disruption, the fear, and the destruction in their lives. And Lord, we pray that, that somehow, some way, there will become peace in that land. We pray that whatever the reasons for the aggression, that instead the reason of love, of grace, of helping others will become a motivation in their lives. For those who are welping, helping and welcoming the, the refugees, we ask a blessing upon them. For that is a generosity that is becoming more and more rare in our world and society. And for all the little wars and battles across the face of this planet, let your peace be known. We pray, dear Lord, that you would be with those who serve, not just as missionaries and pastors, but those who serve our communities. I lift especially to you those who serve in fire departments, police departments, in emergency services, the doctors, the nurses, those who strive to save our lives and be with our government, Lord. Well, in many ways, it is a, an amazing example of democracy and peace. It is also rent with its own divisions now. We pray that, that those on all sides of the aisle would find a way to reach out to each other to serve the citizens of this country and that we might live together in peace without the division. And Lord, we pray that you would be with this congregation, that in worship we would give you praise and honor you, that in service as we reach out to this community and the world, that we would make a difference in the proclamation, the health and life of all that we get an opportunity to touch. 
For, Lord, you have called us not only to worship, but to serve. So guide us in that effort. And let us be a blessing to you in all that we do. So, Lord, we also lift up those to you who are ill, who are shut in, and who are shut out. Touch our hearts that we will see those who are left alone and reach out in your name to share the love that changes us. Help us to be the hands and feet of that good shepherd that, that Boo talked about and make a difference in this community, in this world, and in your name. For those and so many more, we ask that you would guide us, that we might be your presence. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. And now the choir is going to lead us in the worship of song. People said, Amen.
Kim, choir, thank you very much. Amen. And now as the ushers come forward, let us worship God through our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. Take just a moment while you're still standing. Sorry about that. It wasn't fast. If you would turn to those sitting around with you, around you and, and share in signs of the peace of Christ. Peace be with you here. Brent. Okay. How the doxology is a wonderful, powerful piece of music, and I'm going to give you a challenge. If you're a morning person and you like watching the sunrise, or if you're an evening person and you like watching the sunset, in the midst of that sunrise or sunset this week, either softly if you sing in the key of Q flat like I do and you don't want to scare the neighbors, or in a beautiful voice that God has given you, sing the doxology to God as a moment of worship and praise. Because worship and praise should be a part of our life each and every moment of each and every day. Not just this hour and let's see the sermon's going to be about an hour and 20 minutes or so um, that we're gathered on Sunday morning. So Take that as a challenge. And when you see the sunrise or you see the sunset, um, praise God from whom all blessings flow. And if you mess up the words, that's okay. God knows you're praising. So um, I'll ask next week how you did. And speaking of uh, this week and next week, I want to 
thank the church for inviting me to uh, share with you these next three Sundays. It's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to get to lead you and share Christ with you in, in some hopefully significant ways. So, um, again, I appreciate the opportunity. So now, if you'll pray for me, I will pray for us. Lord, we have been worshiping for a good half hour. Many have prepared for worship for hours before that. Praying to you, lifting up the choir, the musicians, lifting up the time of worship. So now, Lord, as we come, we come to your word, we come to your message. We ask that you would Open our ears and hearts that we might hear what your spirit has to say to us today. And that we ask also that you would bless the meditations of this heart and the words of these lips and bless this humble witness for Christ's sake. Amen and amen. <clears throat> today is the second Sunday of Easter. We often think of most church of our holidays as just Easter Sunday. But those are seasons. And not only is Easter a season, aren't we supposed to be the Easter people? Every, not just even every Sunday, we remember and celebrate the resurrection. We celebrate the victory of Christ every day. In fact, the Jewish Sabbath is Saturday. The early church moved to worshiping on Sunday because it is the day of victory, the day of resurrection. And so that's why we are here on Sunday morning instead of Friday night or Saturday. We are the people of victory. At the same time, how many of you feel like you've had nothing but victories this week? Hmm. One. And he probably took whatever it was by the horns and Doug just made it a victory in spite of whatever it was. Oh, one behind me? Cool. Victory in class? That's cool. There are a lot of days I went to school and victory isn't the word I would have used. <laughs> there are a lot of days when victory isn't the word that we would have used. We feel like so many things are just kind of falling apart on us. The world is nothing but war and rumors of wars. When we look at our political situation, we see people standing on opposite sides of reality, yelling at each other in ways that half the time don't even begin to make sense. We find neighbors at odds with neighbors, spouses at odds with each other, and there's illness and sorrow and grief. To the point that often victory isn't what we would think of. But what causes our sorrow and grief? Well, I don't have, we don't have the time, even in our hour and a half, or was that an hour and 20 minutes, <laughs> to list all of them. But a couple of them is, one of them is just grief. Most of us have friends or family who have passed away in the last year, year or two. We're all of an age where that happens more often than we want to admit to or are comfortable with. There's fears, there's hate, there's hunger. Sometimes it's physical hunger, sometimes it's spiritual hunger, sometimes it's just hungering for peace. There's pain. One of the things I discovered about <laughs> passing 50 and then passing 60 was there's a lot of pains. And they don't seem to go away like they used to. There's loneliness. 
And that's a pain that, and a sorrow and a grief all at the same time. There's separation and loss that's, oh, you could do sermons on each one of these. And then there's loss of dreams. As other things change in our lives, our dreams change. Sometimes for better, sometimes for not. And those loss of dreams cause a grief as well, because that's the death of a dream. But what, what does Jesus have to say to these very real issues? Because these are not trivial things. You don't just decide you're not going to worry about them. They're, they're, they're real. And Jesus wants to hear about them. Well, through Paul, in Romans, Jesus does talk about them. He says, what then shall we say in response to these things? All that stuff that was on the previous slide and so much more. If God is for us, who can be against us? Well, there are days we think we know the answer to that one. Seems like everybody. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, Paul says, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? There is no one. Jesus Christ who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, is also interceding for us. Think about that. Whatever you've fumbled and failed at, whatever you've just maybe even on purpose did wrong, Jesus is still interceding for you. Who shall separate us from the love of God, Paul, or the love of Christ, Paul continues. Who shall separate us? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword or politics or laws? What shall separate us? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Who didn't talk about that part? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, Paul continues, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. Can you think of anything else that didn't get covered in there? Television, media, cell phones. None of those things will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. None of them. Nothing in all creation. In fact, pastor does this well. Say this with me. Nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's a powerful statement. It sounds marvelous. We should put that on our refrigerators. Maybe put it on the palm of our hand to remind us. But the only thing is, as we go into our daily lives, sometimes stuff hits us so hard that we do forget that. The one at our house right now is called cancer. Most of you know Kim's dealing with a, uh, a cancer and she's doing pretty good right now. But one of the things about cancer is, is that it, it never quite leaves your mind. And so you're battling that scripture that Paul gave us against a fear that is pervasive. And each of us have those situations in our life that are so hard to push aside. 
so hard to just say, in the name of Jesus, you go away. It's hard. One of the things that I have found early in my career in ministry was a little, I call it a poem, I don't know if it qualifies, but it's called uh, Cancer is So Limited. And it reads, cancer, it cannot, is so limited, it cannot cripple love. It cannot shatter hope. It cannot corrode faith. It cannot eat away peace. It cannot destroy confidence. Cancer is so limited that it cannot kill friendships. It cannot shut out memories. It cannot silence courage. It cannot reduce eternal life. It cannot quench the spirit. That means it cannot push the spirit of God away from you unless we let it. We've all, at this point, know somebody, if not yourself, that has dealt with cancer, who has dealt with some issue in their life that becomes so pervasive that it's so overwhelming to us and our spirit that we feel that separation from God. That we feel alone. Anybody here know who this is? Uh, you're, you're in the right category, but that's not who it is. It's actually a Howard Smith. And he was a, uh, a news anchor for a long time, back when news anchors didn't share opinions, but shared what was going on. I'm not going to chase that rabbit, and I probably shouldn't have chased it that far. <laughs> Patty, am I in trouble? <laughs> not yet. Oh. Well, he was a news anchor when, um, well, after the fall of France, he made a remark about Winston Churchill. And Pearl Harbor is actually when he made the, uh, the uh, comment. Because after the fall of France in World War II, the Britons, the British, were fighting the Germans pretty much by themselves. And it was pretty bleak. Our president was doing what he could. Roosevelt was doing what he could. But our country was very divided. They, so many did not want to get into another European war. But Howard Smith quoted Winston Churchill after Pearl Harbor saying, so we have won. A bizarre comment after Pearl Harbor, I would think except that Winston Churchill knew that America would not sit still for the Japanese bombing Pearl Harbor. That now they would enter the war. And because the British and the rest of the world would now have an advocate, a partner, an ally in the war, he knew things were going to be different. And he knew from that moment that it wasn't going to be easy and it wasn't going to be pretty, but he knew that they had won, that there would be victory at a horrible, horrendous cost. But the price had already been horrible and horrendous. As Jesus hung on the cross, his disciples were scattered. 
the nails were driven in and the forces of, of hell were cheering. They thought they had won. They thought they had beaten God, God's son. And it looked like everything had been for no end. And yet, I can imagine the angels turning to each other as Jesus said, it is finished. And they said, so we have won. There are times we realize that things have, been, have happened that change everything else and that we can then have victory. As the women went to the, the tomb that first Easter morning, the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead. We have won. We have won. There is victory. A victory for who? Well, it was a victory for Jesus. But as God, he already had eternal life. And how all that worked with Jesus, who was fully God and fully woman, fully human. Well, when I figure all that out, I'll tell you how God can be, Jesus could be fully God and fully human, but we know that by faith is true. It was victory for the followers, for the followers in that they knew their sin. We know our sin has been forgiven. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others, hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness. We don't earn this but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. That's pretty powerful words. It's victory over fear. We truly have, do have nothing to fear. The Bible says 365 times in either those exact words or words that mean that, do not be afraid. So now when God says to you, how many times have I told you not to be afraid? You can say at least 365. Didn't your mom hate it when you'd say, how many times have I told you? And you told her how many times? <laughs> God won't be mad. He'll say, yeah, that and a whole bunch more. Do not be afraid. Fear does not need to rule us. The song says, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Beautiful having the congregation sing that today. We have victory over life's trials and tragedies where the rubber of our life meets the road. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And rest is not just a nap. Rest is renewal. Rest is restoration. Not just to get you till supper time, to get you through life. Take up my yoke, Jesus says, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We have victory over doubt. Doubt is part of the human condition, Sister Mary Jean Finney says, but we, and we need hope. Hope is the bridge between doubt and faith, and Jesus is our hope. 
hope gives us victory. We have victory over opposition. Our society seems so full of opposition and conflict right now. We're reminded in 1 Peter, do not repay evil with evil or insult for insult, but with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. So often it just feels good to us to get them back. When they say this and hurt us, we want to say that and hurt them. That's not of God. That is of Satan. Love them. Give them peace, even when they give you evil. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you the reason for the hope you have. And what is our answer? But Jesus Christ and his love, his victory, even the victory over death. Because Jesus died on the cross and had victory. Death is a fact of life. I think there's two people in the Bible that got to bypass that part. Death is the last enemy to be destroyed, though. And in Revelation, Jesus says to not be afraid, for I am the first and last, the living one. I was dead, and behold, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and hell. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We go from this life to the next. Boo was talking about the 23rd Psalm. Even through the valley of the shadow of death, we're not alone. The shepherd is with us, and we have victory. Victory. Oops, let me back that up a second. This is Tony Campello, and I'm going to give you about two minutes of one of his speeches. Um, he is a retired now, but he was a, a sociology professor at a couple different schools in and around Philadelphia. He is kind of the Don Rickles of Christendom. Um, he's, a, he's wonderful, and if we want to sit and watch YouTubes of him sometime, that'd be time well spent. But he is a powerful speaker, and he's going to tell you about a, um, a time at the church he went to. And he went to a black church in downtown Philadelphia, um, because at the time he did that, white people did not go to black churches in Philadelphia. They were segregated from both sides of the aisle. And he not only ended up attending there to worship, which was his original intent, he ended up finally being on staff there. And um, he is at, here is at a convention, and he's just telling about a time he preached there. So now let me share that with you. Good news, it's only Friday. 
Swift is coming! Yeah, you're getting into it. We gotta de the rest of this room. Right? Predators say a bunch of old people meeting in the church on a Saturday morning cannot alter things in their communities and in their state and in their world. But here is the good news. It's only Friday! Something's coming! Now, let's get into it, people. Let's hang loose. I'll give you one more shot. It's Friday, and they're saying a bunch of Baptists who are lipping into a meeting cannot go out energized, ready to inflame their communities with the good news of the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit. But I'm here to tell you, it's on the Friday! Sunday's coming! He went on like that for an hour. When he finished, I was exhausted. <laughs> he ended that sermon yelling at the top of his lungs. Friday! Without hesitation, that whole congregation yelled back, Sunday's coming! <laughs> That's the good news, people. Are we ready to leave this assembly and go back to our churches and mobilize our people? to invade the community, and are we as individuals ready to say, my primary citizenship is in the kingdom, and I'm going to live according to the values and the lifestyle prescribed by Jesus, I'm going to reject Babylon, I will not be conformed to this world, I'm going to be transformed by the Holy Spirit to live out the will of God in this day, and in this age, and in this time, and are you ready? That was rather weak, let me try that again. Are you ready? The good news yes. is then, it's only Friday, but... Sunday's coming! <laughs> so, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Whoops, I pushed the wrong button, I think. Bruce, you've got to bring me back here. Um, but thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Shared with you a while ago, cancer is so limited that it cannot cripple love, it cannot shatter hope, it cannot... But the truth of it is, it's not just cancer that can't do that. All the way down to the bottom there. We are close to the end. Uh, number 27, whoops, that's 25, that's fine, I can take it from there. So, it cannot do those, COVID can't do that, death cannot do that, it cannot cripple love, shatter hope, corrode faith, kill friendships, memories, nothing, nothing on earth can separate us from the love of God. That victory is ours. No matter what you are going through, no matter what you may be thinking, lean into the heavy Holy Spirit and know that that victory is yours. All the challenges that life gives you well, as Dr. Compella said, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Let's try that again. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Amen. There is victory in Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, it's so easy for us to forget. We get lost in the sorrow, the grief, the fear whatever. So use the power of your spirit to wake us up again to the power of your love, to the power of your resurrection, to the victory, the victory in Jesus. Amen and amen. Kim? God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, 
He lived and died To buy my pardon An empty grave Is there to prove My Savior lives Because he lives I can raise tomorrow sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride the joy he gives but greater still the come ashore this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives oh he lives because 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 he lives. And all God's people said, Amen. Okay, you ready? It's Friday. But Sunday's coming. Wait a minute. Sunday is here. And we are the Easter people. And he does live. And if you leave here thinking it's Thursday, you're wrong. <laughs> if you leave here thinking Friday, you're choosing to live in the sad days. Because you are the Easter people. And he lives and you have the victory. Let's stand and sing together.
session. I remind you that there is a meeting of the congregation and that uh, it's an important meeting, Patty tells me. And so uh, those of you who are staying, go ahead and have a seat. And those who need to uh, dash off to the restaurant, I mean, um, to other things, uh, Godspeed. <laughs>